Welcome to this edition of On the Inside. I'm Danielle Lee. And I'm Jake Adams. Today we're going to be taking a look at yoga and what it's all about. I'm super excited to go into Jane's house, so join us on this episode of On the Inside. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of On the Inside. Um, first, could you just talk about what drew you to yoga? Yes, thank you. Um, I was first drawn to yoga when my children were small and I needed some time to myself to really physically move and to just really have time to feel less stress in my life as a mom. And so my friend and I joined a yoga class together and it stuck with me and so I've continued on since then. Mm -hmm. Cool. How would you say that yoga has like um, impacted your life? Well, in the beginning I was just basically doing it for me time and so uh, the practice of yoga has impacted me far beyond uh, really feeling fit in my body. It's helped me. Um, mentally and emotionally, it has given me the tools to um, really stay aware of the quality of my just overall well-being, emotionally, mentally, physically. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned that it helps you stay aware emotionally, mentally, physically. At least for me, I know that for the most part, I whenever I've thought of yoga, I've only thought of the physical aspect of it, the stretching, the you know the different exercises. Yoga is a lot more involved than just the the physical aspect. Like, how many different levels are there? Well, most people, like myself, come to yoga because you know the benefits of the way that it makes you feel physically. But yoga really is about. Um, it goes much more deep inside of you in a, a subtle way. So we use the body because it's very physical, it's tangible, it's easy to feel. And when you get on the yoga mat to do certain things, to take an action, the teachers bring your attention to yourself and the quality of your, the way that you're experiencing really a relationship with what you're doing on the mat. And some of the things can be pretty challenging, and so it brings up um, from the inside a response. And so the invitation is to really recognize how you respond to a challenge, and can you stay present with that feeling and relax inside of it. So yoga really, in its definition, means um, to be stable and comfortable, no matter what your posture is. Mm -hmm. And so that, like, with your, you said, um, reaction, that's how you perceive a certain situation. Yeah. Like your first instinct into how you would react. Right. To it. So it's a response. So anything from the outside typically will create a response as we're always relating to something, whether it's ourselves or somebody else or, a, you know, a group or just something you may read that triggers something in you. And so it really is about... Um, taking a moment to pause and to recognize whatever that is that has, you know, had a, given you a reaction. And then to really meet it in a way in which you're honest and sensitive and, and open and focused so that you can choose the way that you want to respond to it rather than having an immediate impulse reaction. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't realize that like yoga was like so deep. I thought it was just more so like about the exercises. So what would you say is like your favorite part out of all the different levels? I think the more you practice, so at a different times too. So what I know that sometimes I just need to be grounded and get in my body and it feels good to stretch. Um, but it's hard to take the other pieces apart. So there are times when I really feel like I need to I've been going, 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 and I need to just to stop that movement and chill out and, and be still. So in those still pieces, it really gives you an opportunity to recognize perhaps how much stress you really were carrying and yeah. to really have a, a moment to feel at peace mm -hmm. with yourself. So it's more so basically like about the inner peace. Yeah. Mm. Um. So you're the owner of Jane's House of Wellbeing. You're the owner and the director, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. I am. How many classes do you personally teach here? I teach. Uh, I just offered two of my classes to other teachers on the schedule. So I am teaching two classes on Tuesday, two on Thursdays, and one on Saturday. So that adds up to five. Okay. Yes. And what kind of challenges come come along with those? Uh, when it comes to the, the people that you're teaching? Well, I think that for the most part, we're fortunate in this studio because we, we, have, um, we have levels of classes. And so for the beginning classes, you, that's what we basically get. People who are needing the more support and language and it's a learning. Um, it gets challenging when you have multiple layers all show up in one class and that sometimes happens when we're teaching off-site but in this studio it's a little bit more fortunate that we can meet the needs per individual by the classes that they attend mm -hmm. so since you are the owner um what is like your favorite thing about having your own studio that you can practice at and about being your own boss that's a good question <laughs> uh, so for me I think it's just having a space that provides um, a little bit more of a holistic approach to healing and mm -hmm. then that really gives me an opportunity to um, pull in the teachers that I think have something really unique and beautiful to offer and um, it, for me it's, it's a way to, to give back and to practice generosity so you know we have we have scholarship programs and, wow. uh, for people who need, you know, a little bit more support financially. And, and so it's just nice to know that when it's your place, you can really choose what you feel is important mm -hmm. and aligned with basically what my mission is. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. It's always good to, like, give back. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned you have different classes that have um, a wide variety of, you know, um, accommodations. Um, could you speak more about, for like people who have had surgeries in the past or injuries, what kind of accommodations do you have available for them? So first, when people connect to us and they've had um, recent injury or they're coming back from that, we see if they need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one attention. So we offer private work that way that we can do a screen to see how functional they're moving in the body. Um, if they are in a, a place where they can get up and down off of the floor easily, then they could go into a, a more gentle class or a yoga basics class. If it's that they need to do yoga in a chair, we have chair yoga class here as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, as long as they are able to um, fit into one of those classes, the way that the teachers teach here is so intelligent that as we're moving, we move from a place that's most stable mm -hmm. for the spine and then we gradually add more effort and more complexity, but never before they're prepared to go where they're gonna go. And so we really teach accessible yoga for almost anybody who walks through the door, we have a way to meet those needs. 
Wow. And then I want to ask you one more question before we do get into the demonstration. So when people see this show, what do you want them to know about yoga and take away from this show and this particular episode? Well, I would say that it's most important for people to know that as long as you can breathe and as long as you can get here, you can practice yoga. That it's not about creating these really extreme postures unless you're well practiced and prepared for something that's a little bit more advanced. For the most part, it will offer anybody a really good experience to connect to themselves rather than reinforcing out, outside distraction that was what most people walk around experiencing. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and like you even said, you have opportunities and you have um, uh, ways to help people no matter how, you know, their physical attributes are, you know, whatever it is, like you have opportunities to help whoever. And so you, it seems like you really do want literally anyone to come in and, you know, because from what it sounds like, anyone can benefit from it. Yeah. Yeah. We do. We have students of all ages here mm -hmm. and um, all, all stages of life. People mm -hmm. up into their 80s are practicing here. Oh, wow. So that's pretty cool. Like anybody can just come in and get help and work on it, whether it's mental or physical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it meets them where they are. So whatever you bring to the mat is what's going to show up as you're being taught. And then we just use the practice as a way to reinforce self-inquiry an opportunity just to look back in at what's arising for you. It's, it's welcoming in what is real and happening rather than shoving it down or pushing it away. It's just you get to you get to welcome in what's real in the moment and how to care for that. Mm -hmm. what you, how you want to respond to it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Robin. Um, we're going to go to a quick break real quick. And then uh, when we come back, we're going to do a uh, demonstration. So uh, we'll see Super you excited. Yeah, we'll see you. <laughs> talk to Robin, we're actually going to put that into practice. And we're going to head upstairs and do some yoga. <laughs> Step forward on your mat, the very front end, and align your feet underneath your hips. Point your toes straight forward, lift and spread through your toes, so that the ball of the foot broaden to keep the foot that way. Keep your heels down, ground evenly into the four corners of your feet, tone your belly, and as you inhale, take your arms up and overhead. Spread your fingers and as your arms lift, take them all the way up towards the ceiling. In that direction, turn your palms to face each other. As you exhale from your hips, slowly fold forward. Bend your knees as much as you need to. And when you fold forward, the knees bend. So you can lay your chest over your thighs so that the hips slide back behind the heels a little. Keep your feet engaged so if the toes have relaxed fully, broaden the ball of the foot again. Slide your weight back into your heels. Set your hips back without letting the knees crash together or push forward. Lift up about halfway. In that half lift, draw your shoulder blades together. Then lift up a little bit higher. Slowly stand all the way up and bring your hands down and around to your heart. Place your hands onto your hips. Turn to your left to face the long end of your mat. Step your feet out wide. Now take a really long stance here. Take up a lot of your mat. Once you step your feet out really wide, look at your feet real quick. Make sure that the outside of the foot parallels the short end of the mat. Activate your feet again. So lift and spread through your toes, press outward, and use your hands on your hips to help broaden your rib cage as you hold your belly toned. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, send your hips back behind you like you did a moment ago. Fold forward and bend your knees again as much as you need to. So the block is right there in front of you as well. If needed, grab a hold of it to bring the floor up to you so you have somewhere to place your hands. Now, once you have folded forward, see if you can walk your feet out just a little bit wider apart without letting the toes turn out. 
As you inhale next, ground outward into your feet, lift up about to that halfway point, keep your knees soft. As you exhale, fold forward again. So stay moving like this with your breath. Each inhale to lift up halfway, and each exhale to fold. So bend your knees just a little, fold forward again, grab a hold of the block. And so now when you lift, you only have to lift to about right here, so not all the way up, and then fold forward, yeah. So the next time that you fold, however that feels in your body, pause there. The amount that you fold, just stay in that place for a moment, let your head hang heavy, and keep your hands on a surface, so either the floor or the block. Keep your knees soft, relax your neck. Pause for a moment in stillness, connect to your breath. And as you hold, see that you haven't lost the right amount of energy that you need to support you here. The feet active, the legs firm, the belly drawn in. Place your hands onto your hips, bend your knees, stand all the way up. Keep your hands on your hips here, straighten your legs without locking the knees. And when you have that micro bend in your knee, it allows the muscles to stay engaged. Focus your eyes out in front of you. Think about the way that you sent your hips back a moment ago, and as you inhale, bend both of your knees. As your knees bend, send your hips back so that the knees are not being pushed forward. Slowly press down into your feet, straighten your legs without locking your knees, and now set this into motion. So use your inhale to bend both of your knees, send your hips back a little as you lean forward, and as you exhale, slowly straighten your legs and stand all the way back up. So keep moving in time with your breath. Inhale, bend your knees, set the hips back, and then slowly straighten them. Now when you set your hips back behind you, let your torso come forward just a little to counterbalance the weight of the hips going back, and then look at your knees as they bend. So if your knees are not stacking right above the heels, adjust your feet in. So you see how your knees are coming in a little bit? Stand all the way up. Walk your feet in a little closer together, and then bend your knees again. Yeah. Well, the next time that you set your hips back, pause there, lean forward just a little more, place your hands onto your thighs with your fingers pointing down, and you start to roll the right shoulder in and down, take your gaze left. So you need a visual, you can glance up here, stay moving like this, you got it. <laughs> Try to hold the legs really still, so without changing anything about your legs, you just dip the shoulders in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, as you turn one shoulder in and down, that knee will try to follow. So when you dip the right shoulder in, press more into your right hand so that knee doesn't follow that movement. No, you're good. <laughs> okay, and then come back through center. Place your hands onto your hips. Slowly stand all the way up and bring the feet back together. Okay, turn to face towards the front of the room. Step forward on your mat. Once you have your feet underneath your hips, look at your alignment again. Point your toes straight forward. Activate your feet, firm the muscles of your legs, and as you inhale, take your arms up and overhead. You've been here before. As you exhale from the hips, slowly fold forward. Soften your knees, bend them a lot, however much you need to. Keep the weight in your heels, let your head hang heavy. You've been here before, again, set back into the heels, lower your hips down and back, watch the movement of your knees, see that they don't crash together, or push forward. Once your hips lower back, lift your torso and your arms into chair. Move with a strong flat back. Take the rounding out of your spine and then stand all the way back up. Bring your hands around to your heart. Place your hands onto your hips. Turn to your right this time. Face the long end of your mat. I'm going to make adjustments on your blocks. Step your feet out wide. Take even a longer stance than where you were a moment ago. Once you have the feet out wide, and if you need a visual, you can glance up here. Turn the right heel out and the left toes straight forward. And that should put your heels roughly on the same line. Let's see, turn that heel out a little more, those toes forward. You might need to shorten your stance slightly. As you inhale, bend just your left knee. Ground outward. Okay, and then slowly straighten the leg again. Find that micro bend so the knee doesn't lock. As the knee bends, bend it slowly so that every bit of it can be felt and lift the outer left hip up, bring the right hip down. When you bend your left knee next, pause there. So hang on to this muscle energy that allows that left thigh bone to stay rolling open. Keep your shoulders facing the long end of your mat, so this yoga wall right here, the wood wall with all the straps. Open your arms out at shoulder height. Take your gaze over your left hand and pause there in stillness. Spread through the fingers, keep the hands and the arms engaged. Soften your shoulders down your back. 
Try to bring a soft quality into the jaw, a little bit of space between the top and the bottom row of teeth. Widen your tongue at the roof of your mouth. Recognize the quality of your thoughts and of your awareness. And if it's drifting, come back to sensation. Place your hands onto your hips. Slowly straighten your left leg without locking the knee. Turn your toes back to face the long end of your mat and then walk your feet together. Once you have the feet together, turn back to face the front of the room. Adjust your feet underneath your hips. Activate them from the muscles of your legs and your belly and as you inhale, take your arms up and overhead. Follow your exhalation, fold forward, soften your knees, let your head hang heavy. Keep the weight in your heels, your knees can bend as much as they need to. Keep the weight back into your heels, lower your hips down and back again into chair. Lift your torso and your arms, bend your knees a lot to get the hips to go back. When you lift your torso and your arms, take the rounding out of your spine, open up the heart space, stand up and bring your hands to your heart. Place your hands onto your hips. Turn to your left, face the long end of your mat, step your feet out wide again. So you're going back into that same thing. Give yourself plenty of space between your feet. With your hands on your hips, this time the left leg is the back leg, so pick up the back heel and spin it back. Point your right toes straight forward towards the front of the room. Look at your feet, make sure your heels are on the same line. Lift and spread through your toes, ground outward into your left foot. With both of your feet active, level your hips out. So left hip down, right hip up. Look at your knee as it bends, and if it pushes past the ankle, give yourself a little bit more length between the stance, between the feet. Guide your knee towards the pinky toe by grounding outward. And the next time that you find that bend in your knee, pause there. Press the whole thigh bone open, level the hips, open your arms out at shoulder height, spread your fingers, and take your gaze over your right hand. Got it? Soften your shoulders down your back. Bend your knee again, and then guide your knee towards my hand. This way. Yeah, there you go. Good. You'll notice if there's any difference in what you feel on this side of the body. With time, notice if the arms start to feel heavy and lower towards the floor. Re-engage, lengthen your arms from your shoulders, spread your fingers, and hold them at the height of the shoulders. Soften what's not needed, the muscles in the face and the eyes. Place your hands onto your hips. Straighten your front leg again without locking the knee. Readjust your toes forward, then step your feet in. Turn and face the front of the room. Align your feet underneath your hips. Activate them, tone your belly, and as you inhale, take your arms up and overhead. Follow your exhalation, slowly fold forward. Bend your knees again as much as you need to. Bend your knees a lot now, place your hands down onto the floor and one foot at a time, step back to downward facing dog. When you bend your knees, lift your hips really high, take your gaze towards your feet and start to press your chest back towards your thighs. Keep your arms straight and just guide your chest back this way. Send the hips back, there you go. Wiggle your feet back behind you just a little, take up more space on your mat. Pedal through the heels, press one heel down as you bend the opposite knee in and keep pressing your hands forward and down. Give yourself plenty of space between your hands and your feet so the stance is long. Bring that movement into stillness. Draw the feet in just a little bit closer together. Tone your belly a lot. And as you inhale, lift your heels and your hips really high. As your hips lift up, straighten your legs and then slowly round forward out into plank. Bring your shoulders right above your hands. Take your gaze forward of your hands, and as you exhale, lift your hips up and back to downward facing dog. Come forward and back a few times. So when you come forward, if your shoulders can go forward of your hands, wiggle the feet back more. A little more. There you go. Keep your arms straight and strong. Keep your legs straight and strong. And as soon as you come forward, push into your hands and try to broaden the space between the shoulder blades. Hold the brace of the front body so rib cage in and down so the hips don't drop. Now the next time that you come forward, pause there. Lift your hips a little higher and then push into my hands. There you go, hold that. Focus your eyes, soften your jaw. This ain't it. Different. You got it. Sorry. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right, lift up and back to downward facing dog. Let your head hang heavy and feel the difference of how good this feels after holding something like plank. The most important thing is that you have fun. <laughs> Right. Walk your feet back to your hands. Let your knees bend as much as they need to. Point your toes straight forward. And as you stand up, take your feet out wide. Let your arms hang heavy and just swing them around. So use this just to completely relax and release after a place of effort. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Gradually slow that down. Take your arms up and overhead. Fold forward again with the same awareness of how to move. Send the weight into your heels. Bend your knees. Bend your knees a lot. Step back again, downward facing dog. <laughs> just a transition. Come down to your hands and your knees for just a moment. You, know, you can't be there long. Make your way down onto your back. Well, however it's easiest for you. Come down to your hands and your knees, and then sit down real quick and come down onto the back body. When you lower down all the way onto your back, you can just bring your head towards the back of the room and your feet towards the front of the room. And come forward and down onto your belly. However you have to get there, all the way down is good. And you can scoot back so you can stay on the floor or on your mat. Turn your gaze to the right, come all the way down onto your belly, so fully supported, all the way down. Slide your arms into just a comfortable position, turn your gaze to the right. You can also stack the hands if you want to rest your head on your hands. Drag your right knee up to about the height of your hip, so just slide it onto the floor, off to the side, and let this be a place where you soften. So you can bend the right knee, yep, bend your knee, and then just slide your knee up here. Yeah, so how the knee's bent. And rest your head down. Let this be a place where you just pause for a moment. Turn your head to the opposite direction. Straighten your right leg and draw the left knee up. Center your forehead, slide the left leg back in. Press up to your hands and your knees and take one exhale back to child's pose. Hips to heels, pause there. You can allow your head to rest on the floor or on stacked arms. Just rest your hips all the way down towards your feet. All right. And then take your time. When you are ready, you can come up. and then come into a seated foundation. However it's comfortable for you, it can be really comfortable to sit on the block to lift your hips up a little bit. Sitting on the block? Sit on the block, yep. It just brings a little okay. bit of a lift into the hips. Okay. Bring your hands to your heart. Namaste. Thank you for being here and trying this out. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I'm exhausted. <laughs> So we just finished our yoga session. It was very relaxing, but I am kind of tired. What about you, Jake? I'm I'm definitely ready for a nap. I'm one tired boy, that's for sure. But you're always tired, though. I know, I know. But <laughs> I mean, this just added to it, and I just I'm probably gonna go take a nap at home once once I leave. I feel like he's always napping. I find him sleeping in class with a book. Well, I mean. I didn't think it was that noticeable because, you know, I try to use the book to, like, hide my face and stuff, but, you know, it's whatever. So I'm Danielle Lee. And I'm Jake Adams. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of On the Inside. To find out more information about Jane's House, you can visit them on the web at janeshousestudio.com. You can also find them on Facebook. 